own, don't you? You've just moved into the old house. Yes, I'm the one opening the little bookshop. <laughs> Many of us are not at all convinced by the sudden transformation of the old house into a shop. You do understand, don't you? Dear madam, no one has plucked up courage enough to sell books in this forsaken coin of the world. My first customer. He so jealously guards his privacy after the tragic death of his beloved wife. You can't know this place by yourself. You don't really look old enough. Or strong enough. You look old, but you don't look strong. Things have taken quite a dip in your visit of late, haven't they? She's a very powerful woman. Does that not concern you? No. Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick. That's Christy Lemire, that's Alonzo Duraldi, I'm Matt Achety. Uh, they're gonna review Bookshop. Uh, I don't read, I don't watch. <laughs> you probably so read more I'm than we gonna, do, actually. I'm not gonna watch a movie about books, but they did, they'll tell you about it. <laughs> the Bookshop. The Bookshop, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so Emily Mortimer plays a widow who uh, loves books, and she and her husband uh, loved books together, and now it's the late 50s, and so she wants to open a bookshop in a small seaside town in England, but uh, in doing so, she takes over this house, which a uh, local uh, power broker and Budinsky, Patricia Clarkson, wants to turn into an art center and manages to sort of like turn most of the town against her. What will happen? Uh, this feels like, an SCTV sketch about a British movie, because it's so British. Like, they're always talking about books, and you've got, like, you know, Bill Nye is the town recluse, but, you know, she sends him books, and they begin this correspondence, and Patricia Clarkson always has, like, a camellia in her hair, and she's spinning her webs and trying to ruin everyone's life, and it's just very... Very British. It's very British, and all the the lovely little school children, and the little school boys, and their little shorts, and their little the sea socks, scouts, and the sea scouts, and and when when Ellie Mortimer and the young girl who helps her at the bookshop, when they have tea, there's like this sweet little like hand crocheted little tea cozy That's over right. the kettle, which I'm sure Dave probably appreciates. Oh, totally, yeah. Uh, Honor <laughs> Neefsey, by the way, plays yes. the young girl. The girl. Uh, you may recognize her from Netflix's cult hit, A Christmas Prince. Oh, you may. <laughs> I did. Um, yeah, this is, you know, look, I like these people and Clarkson does a, does a spot on British accent. Mm, she does not, pretty good. does not stand out. And I mean, it's just, she doesn't, she fits in with the rest of the people who are mm -hmm. actually British. Um, this is a movie where there's a ton of narration, and even uh, though that narration is delivered by Julie Christie, it's still a ton of narration, and I have a, kind of a low threshold for a movie that, it, it felt like this movie doesn't know how to tell me things, so it's gotta tell me things. Right, and, well it's based I, on a book called The Bookshop. Appropriately yes, enough. Yes, but that's right. No excuse. <laughs> right. So I, I guess that Julie Christie is just reading the book called The Bookshop. Perhaps she was at a bookshop when she read The Bookshop, and she's reading it to us now. Was um, it written in a bookshop? It, it might have been. Um, and yeah, it's so pat and it's so safe in telling us like, thinking for yourself is good, and reading books is also good. It's fundamental. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, I, this feels like it's in this weird time capsule. I don't know how anyone thought this was still relevant now because it's such an obvious idea. Yeah, like, like reading Fahrenheit 451 is good, and reading Lolita is good. And, it's, <laughs> and there's not even like the big showdown over Lolita exactly. that you might this is expect. Something you would think that when a bookshop <laughs> owner is ordering copies of Lolita that that's gonna be, no, this movie is too like chill for that. Also, she orders 250 copies. How many people are in that town or even in neighboring towns that come to the bookshop that you're gonna order 250 copies of anything? That's just bad bookshop owning. And even the girl who, the little school girl who helps her even points out like, that's a lot of copies of Lolita. <laughs> like what, she's the one stuck stocking the inventory. Right. So I don't blame her for having complaints about Ugh. that. It's a good point. Yeah, and it's, it's just, it's so, it's so nothing. Like, and yeah, you know, it's, well made. The period and the, detail. The costumes are all lovely, and everyone talks about how drafty and moldy and like flooded, potentially <laughs> flooded, this little sweet little house is, and you can feel the damn. Yeah, you hear the wind whipping through yeah. uh, Bill Nye's house. Yeah. Bill Nye. I, he's like our Gene Hackman of this generation. <laughs> he's in everything, but he's always really good. Yeah, I mean, and really he doesn't pick up in, until he shows up. And at yeah. first they have this, you know, very a, British a correspondence, yeah, yeah. very British correspondence with each other. And one device that that the director uses, which I actually like, was that he looks into the camera and he's reading his, or he's he's 
saying his letter as if it were a speech into the camera. Yes. Complete with the kind of hesitations you would have if you're like writing and trying to find just the right word to express what he wants to say in just the right moment without being too forward or creepy or whatever it is. So there are there are like glimmers of style here and there, but otherwise it's just really straightforward and really on the nose and really safe and really pat. Yeah, this is written and directed by Isabel Quache, who is a Catalan filmmaker who has worked mostly in English. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a big fan of her early film, Things I Never Told You, with Lily Taylor and Andrew McCarthy. Not always down for her stuff. I don't. I, I think her movies tend to be a little on the safe and vague side, and I think this movie falls into both of those traps. How is it definitely safe? How is it vague? It's it's vague in that even when you're making a movie about repressed British people, <laughs> there's so much not being communicated and not being shared, which is fine. I mean, I, I love a movie where you have to sort of dig for it, but it's almost sort of like, they're just not telling you. <laughs> well, and yeah, and Emily Mortimer, who I, I think is always good, I, I really do. Um, there's not much to her character, although no. she's our central driving figure here. Yeah. Aside from the fact that she's like, She's feisty, you know, which she shows in kind of understated glimmers, and I appreciate that she exerts that feisty side of her sure. character more and more. I, I like that about her. We know she's a widow. We know she likes books. And that's kind of uh, yeah. It. I, yeah. I, I kept thinking about her Thirty Rock character, my mm. bones. <laughs> um, yeah, it, there's cute. just not much to this. But if you are the sort of person who loves to see like tea cozies and <laughs> raincoats and lampshades and, and books, book covers, so yeah, exactly. And you've already watched the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie <laughs> Society on Netflix, which I haven't watched yet, but I need to. Uh, then you know this will be a nice. Like rainy afternoon, cozy, sort of like chocolat movie for you to watch, but it's just not much. Yeah, it, it, I was gonna say, yeah, rainy day and chocolat. I was thinking about chocolat the whole time, because yeah. chocolat also thinks it's very daring. Uh huh. I was calling it bookalat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you want to see this, yeah, it, it, we talk about take your mom movies here. Oh. This, is, this is a take your mom. Is your movie. great grandmother alive? Aww. She might enjoy this. Okay, I'm saying five point eight. Uh, <laughs> six. It's like that's like I'll, that's like the, that's my my most tepid recommendation. All right. It, so our number is a five point nine, and it is at fifty seven percent on the tomato meter. So it's very sweet. Bye. Like this video? That's terrific. Never miss another What the Flick video by hitting the subscribe button below. And if you ring the bell, you'll get notified whenever we publish a new one.